when you as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, you can tell stories or teach something to your client that makes the difference and an impact, you set yourself apart from the rest. You have something unique within you. You can have your celebrity signature talk that you then share with your audiences, with your potential clients. And when you do it in a way that you also incorporate stories and have the right presentation, this is when you set yourself apart and put your business into the spotlight. We believe that you are strong by design and you were made in God's image to have a strong body, mind, and spirit. You're listening to the number one strength and health authority podcast in the world. So let's get ready to unlock your potential and transform your life in today's episode. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Strong by Design podcast. Geez, I feel like I haven't recorded a podcast in like weeks. <laughs> this is fun. Uh, this is exciting. I have a, a, a new friend, a guest that uh, we met. Jared and I met uh, a few months ago at PodFest in Orlando and had a wonderful conversation uh, with our guest. And um, she too has a podcast and it just made sense for her to come since she lives locally about 45 minutes away. She made the drive to come to the Critical Bench Compound and sit down with me today. And we're gonna have a really, really fun conversation. Before I introduce our special guest, I wanted to say thank you for finding the show. Of course, if you're a new listener, uh, we just love every new listener we get. Um, it's another download, and you can go back and listen to all of our past episodes. We have hundreds and hundreds of episodes for you to go back and listen to. Um, and uh, topics are uh, a plenty. We talk about all things here on Strong by Design, uh, ways to help you stronger in body and mind and in spirit. And I think we do a really good job of covering all three of those areas of our lives. So uh, hope, hope that you enjoy what you're about to hear and going back into our archives and listening to past content. If you hear any yard work uh, to equipment outside, I guess it's landscape day here at the compound. Um, and then to our past listeners, thanks for coming back. We love, uh, love the fact that you are uh, continuing to consume our show and uh, the show only continues to get bigger and better as the years progress, uh, almost into our seventh season now. So yeah, they're, uh, they're out there, they're working hard. But luckily these are good mics. So our special guest, and I will pronounce her name correctly, her first name's Sabine, that's easy. Her last name is Kvenberg. And that's a K-V-E-N, which is tough for us, you know, English speakers to put together. <laughs> uh, she is a, a, a wonderful storyteller. She is a speaker from the stage. She is a coach. You're a, you're a singer, songwriter, actress. I mean, you have a lot of accolades on your, <laughs> uh, long, on your long list, uh, your resume. And uh, we, we had engaged in a great conversation when we first met. And I really felt that this is a topic that we haven't really discussed much here on the show, which is really kind of present, how to present yourself in life, how to communicate to an audience, uh, and how to kind of uh, separate yourself from others in a way that makes you stand out, makes you more appealing, uh, makes your message really uh, hit home. Uh, with the people that you're speaking to. And this obviously can help people in all walks of life. Doesn't matter what you do um, for your profession what, or, or in your personal life, being a really good communicator, a good speaker is just, I mean, I've always prided myself on being able to get up on stage or talk in front of a group of people because I've always enjoyed it. But I know for most people, that's not true. Yeah, so, absolutely right. First of all, welcome, Sabine, to the show. Well, thank you, Chris, for having me. I am delighted to be here. Yes. It's, it's wonderful. And um, yeah, I look forward to our conversation. Yes, I think so. I'm very curious after looking, you know, getting to know you a few months ago when we, we first spoke and then doing a little digging and some reading and getting to know more about your last three decades <laughs> or so uh, of what you've been doing, uh, very intrigued by 
just your uh, your upbringing. Obviously, you you were not born and and, and raised in this country. No. Nope. Uh, so that's always interesting in and of itself. Uh, but also, from a it, it sounds, and I might be wrong, but was this uh, something from a younger age that you were kind of one of those performer little girls at five, six, seven years old that was looking for the spotlight, looking for others' attention? Um, is this something that you kind of innately had in you, or was it developed, or both? Actually, both, but yes, I was always singing and dancing and was the the light of the show, so to speak. Yeah. But as you know, for many people, when you go through that growing up stage and then all of a sudden you have to become serious. Yes. Right? And so I had no idea actually that you can uh, become a professional actor by studying it. Mm, I always right. thought you had to be discovered or something, right? Right, no, right. So uh, I, I listened to the well-meant advice of my dad who said, Sabina, find a job with benefits and a good <laughs> salary so you can pay your bills and yes. have something left over to pursue your hobbies. Yes. By that he meant my singing and acting. And I thought, okay, that sounds right, right? right. And that's what I did. And I ended up getting a business degree in, in, in Germany and ended up working for an insurance company as a claim adjuster. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, exactly right. How you can, interesting. Uh, and you can only imagine, like, for a creative person yes, like myself. I you're was in like, a box. I was in a box. And one day, it, it, it accumulated that feeling of unhappiness. I found myself staring out of the window, and I still remember it like it was yesterday. Chris, I was thinking to myself, oh, I came to that realization, I cannot do this for the next 40 years. That's right. What is mine to do? Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> <laughs> that same week, I, as I walked from my work home, I bumped into my former drama music teacher, oh. who was always an inspiration to me. And we had a you know, conversation, and then he asked me if I was still active with my duo that I had, my singing group, my acting group, and I said, no. And then he said one thing that literally changed my life. You may expect something big, but right. it was actually something very small. He said, what a shame, Sabina, you are so talented. Mm. And that, that woke me up somehow, right? Yes. And I thought to myself, he is right. Now, mind you, none of my family members were in the entertainment industry. I had no idea how to get started. But when something wakes up within you, right, you find a way. Mm. The how will show up. Yes. So I went home, opened up the yellow pages, Yes, it yellow? has no, been a while. I, I, it's okay. We had yellow pages. I know. I, 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 I grew up in the 70s and 80s. I remember yellow pages very well. So I looked for acting schools. Yeah. I called. I scheduled an audition. I had no idea how to audition. So I, I took this little booklet that we read. It was a play that we read in school. I looked for the biggest paragraph. I memorized it. <laughs> um, it, was a role, it was a male role. Of oh the detective. my goodness! <laughs> and so I played it. I played even the male de uh, detectors, uh, detective, and then the female. So I I switched places. It was hilarious. That's probably why I got that. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that shows a, a dual, like a dual talent there, right? Yes. Oh, or a willingness to try something yeah, different. Yeah. How interesting! And it makes me think when you said that. It always strikes me that. Sometimes we are not a good judge of our own talents. Mm -hmm. we, it takes someone else to point out something in us. Yes. To which lit a fire. It sparked you. Absolutely. But had that conversation never happened, who knows how, how many years you might have just drifted along without tapping into your passion, mm -hmm. the things that really fired you up. And I think there's a lot of people living like that. We've talked about this in past episodes about, you know, doing something that fills you with passion. You know, I, I get to live my passion in my daily work here 
at Critical Bench in, in creating health and fitness-based programming that helps people all over the world uh, with all the years of experience of working with people face-to-face -face and a lot of people older. Uh, they, they, there's a, a joke sometimes that they call me the geriatric coach here <laughs> at, at Critical Bench because I'm good at at creating programming for the older folks, the 55 plus, 65 plus community. But those are the people that I really enjoyed spending time with for years, helping them work through a variety of neuromuscular or uh, nerve related issues that mm -hmm. are kind of the norm for people that are older. You know, the, the body starts to break down. And um, so that was always filled me with great passion to be helping people. And I still get to help people. At Isn't that it level, it is. It's wonderful, yeah. and then we get to talk about it on the podcast. Yeah, that's even and more so beautiful. It's <laughs> more beautiful, right? And so, it, 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 I feel like it's a luxury for me and a blessing to be able to live out those that passion on a regular basis. And then, obviously, you were what in your twenties when you had this conversation mm -hmm. with your drama teacher. Oh yeah. And then that kind of changed the whole trajectory of the of the, uh, where you are today. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And um, th the interesting fact is, too, that oftentimes people, when they see you going in a different direction, yeah. there is fear that comes up. Yeah. And they try to, to quote-unquote, warn you yeah. or even say, don't do it. Yep. And oftentimes people listen to it and then they don't. And I had that too. I had those, what I call them, dream stealers. Yes. Well meant, you know, not yeah. malicious or anything like that. But they said, oh, Sabina, it's a starving profession. You never make money. And, you know, the scandals that are in the entertainment industry. And I said, look, if I don't at least give it a try, I never know. Yep. And so I, I, I got started. And the interesting fact is I even were persuaded to, I started like halfway in, like did a half education, right? Okay. So two weeks in, boom, I knew that's what I wanted to do. And I went full out, full in. And the funny thing is after two years being a stage actress, I landed a role on TV and we only filmed for six weeks over the summer but during that time I made more money than I did the entire year working as a claim adjuster oh my goodness and see when you do something you love learn the skills yeah, yeah? yeah. but if it's your, your soul's desire the, the money will follow yeah you know? no you're 100% yeah. right it, uh, we have a friend of ours who was recently a guest on the show and he has a, a, a saying go all in Mm -hmm. And it, it is true in life. You know, people have been told a lot in life, feel like, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. I don't know, as I've gotten older, I, I tend to disagree with that approach. I think you should go all in and put all your eggs in one basket yeah. and give it everything that you have. What do you think it took, you know, for a Major League Baseball player to become the best mm -hmm. and to make it in professional sports? Or an actress or actor to get the starring role in a, in a, mm -hmm. a big TV series or, or a movie or a doctor or a nurse, they went all in on that one thing. They got very narrow-minded, very singular, mm -hmm. and went as deep as they could. And I think that's a real good lesson for people is, and I wish I knew this when I was younger, I tried to be master of many things mm -hmm. and what you become is mediocre in many things master of none yeah right? yeah and so i think it, it it's good to also be balanced and to you know put effort into other areas of your life but essentially it's okay to kind of have one clear clear too yeah and focus and drive there, there are two things you're absolutely right that focus and the drive and that doesn't mean to to let go of everything else right. especially if you still need financial assistance to what you do right i was still working when i uh, pursued my career yeah. and did the education i was working during the day i got up very early uh, so I could leave early, and then the afternoon and evening, I was studying. So I was still responsible for my life because I still had to eat, right? Yes. So th there is that balance. But you are absolutely right. If this is what you want to do, go full in. Yeah. 
and and do it. Yeah, yeah. agreed. Yeah. Tell me, and it sounds like from this, you know, you were doing stuff from the stage, which is considered like live, live action mm -hmm. with an audience, right? Mm -hmm. And then you did stuff that was probably also recorded, like mm -hmm. more for to be produced, and, right? Right. Tell me kind of the difference between those two approaches. Like, uh, do you have to have a different energy about you, or do you have to? Um, is it? Is it? Are you more encouraged, or are you more focused when you have a live audience versus if something is going to be able to give you multiple takes? Yeah, a very good question. There are absolutely differences between those two stages. Yes. If you are on a live stage, if you have an audience, first of all, you, you have to be bigger. Everything has to be bigger. Yeah. When, when you're in a smaller room, it's okay to have that normal size, but especially when you have a large audience, everything has to be big. Yes. Your voice has to project. When you are in front of a camera, First of all, you don't have that energy of an audience, which you have to create that energy you yourself. You have to manufacture it. That's yeah. right, because there is no back and forth. And with the camera, there are two different things. You can have like, like a, a full body shot, you know, so you have more flexibility. But when you have a close-up like this, can you imagine when it's that, and you do big moves, you're out of the picture. You're out of the frame. So you have to make sure that you're in the frame. You have to make sure us to look into the camera. Yes. So for example, now I'm looking into the camera and I know exactly where the light is. So I know exactly how I need to talk to. And then I am picturing that there is another friend on the other side. So yeah. I can talk to you. And that makes a big difference. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. And also the projection of your voice. Big stage big projection when you are in front of a microphone you cannot scream into the microphone right, right? that would like oh blow everybody away so right. these are the big differences but both of them need the right confidence and that's what i that's what i teach now that's i right. coach my clients to to build that confidence and there are certain steps that you can that you can uh, reach that confidence and i also teach them how to prime them to get ready to be in front of the camera or ready in front of the stage. Mm. Of course, there's the immediate prime right before you go. And then there is the prime that you do even beforehand. You prepare yourself for everything. Make sure you have the right exercises. Your speech is clear. Yes. Uh, the tempo is right. So all of these are the essentials. And... I draw a lot from my acting career because we had to learn things a certain way, vocal, but also in the presentation, to be real. Mm. Oftentimes people think, oh, you have to quote unquote act. This is way far from the truth. And if you look at the real good actors, they, of course, speak a character, but they are still themselves, that authentic self. And when you can combine those things, uh, wow, yeah. it, it changes everything. It changes how you present yourself and your business. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, I don't know if you've been asked this question before or recently, thinking back all the times you took the stage, is there a, uh, a particular night or a particular show that stuck with you uh, and I'm of course my mind goes to something with an audience where you just had an I say out of body experience but you were just on and you just felt it you felt that that kind of real time response from the audience and it was just a very memorable uh, you know evening let's say or 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 event, uh, depending on what time of day it took place. I'm always picturing it's a nighttime and it's, <laughs> it's just, everyone's dressed nice and goes to the theater just to see a performance. And is there anything that stands out for you as something that you're most proud of with all your years of work? Wow. There are quite a few, actually. Yeah. Uh, you know, one when I was uh, as when I was on stage as a, a professional actress in Germany, actually in Europe, uh, when I played um, in Le Miserable, I, mm. I played the role of Madame Thénardier, and it was just 
so that that feeling that you get or that I got was I'm I'm in the zone I'm where I supposed to be mm-hmm. and I can make people laugh I can create an emotion for people mm. it was just beautiful beautiful experience but then the other thing often being asked that hey had did you always have the confidence yes did you were you afraid to go on stage and the answer is yes yeah. i was afraid and i think back one time i was already here in in the states i had my performing arts school and the the next step for me was there's always a next step right um, we had a church that rented space in our facility that we had for Sunday service. And actually, it turned out that we were invited to the first service. And I said, well, well check it out, what it is, okay? <laughs> Making sure that everything is is okay. Yeah. It was a new, new church uh, in town, Unity Church of Fredericksburg. And we went, and it just spoke to me. And then they were filling all kinds of positions, and they were looking for a music minister. Oh, my goodness. I remember you talking about this yeah. when, when we spoke. Yes. And for some reason, my, my arm went up and said, yes, me. I had no clue, but I was called to do that. And so two or three years in, what I learned, I got... I started taking classes. I now incorporated also the spiritual side into everything that I taught. And then two, three years into being a music minister, I started producing or writing my own songs. Wow. And then we were invited, or I was invited to go to a conference for speakers and singer-songwriters. So I was there, it was great, it was beautiful. And the second day to the last, the MC announced that all our names were put into a hat for the chance to perform your original music on stage. Oh my goodness. I tell you, Chris, my heart sank. And I was afraid. I was nervous. And I was thinking to myself, oh, hopefully I'm, my name will not be drawn. <laughs> Now, you wonder... Why? Yes. I performed in front of thousands of people. I was a musical theater performer. But I performed somebody else's song, uh, somebody else's lyrics. This was yours. This was mine. And and I was I I did perform it in front of our small congregation, a very supportive, right? but never in front of a larger audience. Mm. And this was an audience of musicians. Oh my goodness, yeah. Now, you know what came in? The limiting beliefs. Oh, Sabine, you never studied songwriting. Mm. You never went to college for that. You never, you never. And you never formally learned to play the guitar. That is from your childhood, from your teenage uh, uh, years. And I had a song that I prepared called Hello Again. Um, or I am. So uh, it, it just came to me from, from above, from the creators. You mm-hmm. know, I, I, I really felt that. So I was standing there, and guess what? My name wasn't drawn. And I was like, ah, but at the same time, disappointed yes. in myself. So the next evening, and you were asking me in your question, I know it's a long answer. No, I love answer. it. I like it. Okay. Uh, You asked me, was there a moment that accelerated you or elevated you? So the last evening, there were two performers. And one of the performers, Greg Temblin, a wonderful songwriter, he ended that evening with a song called Heart of the Mother. And it's kind of a chant, and we all sang along because we all knew that song. Mm. We perform that and sing that in our uh, service. So we all sang along, and it was a chant, and we held hands. Contact is very important, too. And we were, I mean, I felt I was, I was floating. I was lifted up and felt so good. Until the MC announced through the speakers, 
We felt so bad that not everybody was able to perform their songs. Now you have the opportunity this evening. And here, this immediately, I got that, that, that yes. cut in your heart or yes. in your belly. I, we've all felt it. We all we, felt that, it, that right? That feeling, yeah. Yes, yes, oh my gosh. But because of the state I was in, that elevated state, I was able to snap out of it and, you know, walking my talk and starting shifting my self-talk to, hey, Sabine, it's okay. It's okay to be afraid. Just be yourself. Mm -hmm. Just share what it is. If, and if you don't do it today, where you have the supportive audience, you will never do it. That's right. And I said, okay, that's what it is. And I was just then remembering all the exercises that we do as performers when we go on stage. Mm -hmm. We are all a little bit nervous. You do the right breathing. And that calmed me down. And then my name was called, and I went up on stage. And I still remember the comments that I got back afterwards. You know, I had this skirt and a blouse, and I had my guitar. And everybody was afterwards saying, you look like Maria from The Sound of Music. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll take it. <laughs> so it's a good look. I, yeah, I know. And I went on stage. And then I was just myself. I shared with the audience that I picked up my guitar from the attic from my dad when I visited him the last time, and I wrote this song. And I invited everyone to sing along. It was very simple. I am, very simple melody. And I shared that music. And it was really from the heart. It was really this feeling inside can no longer hide. It wants to come out and play in my field of dreams. <laughs> so free and so pure, my soul now can soar. Now I can see who I am. And you know the most powerful words? I, I am. am, I am. I am, I am. And so everybody mm. was singing along, and the harmonies that came out of oh, it yeah, were beautiful. Huh. But here's where the magic started to happen. Afterwards, people came up to me, thanking me. Thanks for sharing your message. Mm. Thanks for sharing the song. Keep composing, keep singing. It was a confirmation, really. Mm. And then also, one woman came up to me and said, this is what I, exactly what I needed to hear. Mm. And can you imagine if I would have given in to my fears, I would have never done that. Mm. I would have never created a CD and songs thereafter. Mm -hmm. I would never had all the experience and powers that I now incorporate into my coaching, making a difference in other yeah. people's lives. Yes. You would have robbed yourself of all of this great, not just myself. So, but right, others, others, right, yeah, right, yeah. Others. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's that, yeah, yeah I, we all have things in our lives that we regret on some level. But the little ones you can kind of overcome, I think, pretty easily. Mm -hmm. It's those, those moments you had a feeling in you and you said, now's the time. Yes. I got to step into this. Yes. This is my moment here. And I think we've all come. We've all had those moments in our mm -hmm. life where we've either stepped in, th just thrown ourselves into something, or kind of hidden, hidden ourselves away from it. And then I'm sure there's people kicking themselves listening right now because they can recall a moment in mm -hmm. their life where, ah, I wish I, wish I had that back. I, I wish I could have done it differently. And uh, it's great to hear examples of when you did take that step. And obviously, it did elevate, and it did change, and it, it's a great memory for you. Yes. And for others. Right. And to that point, when somebody is listening and said, oh, I wish I had done that, mm. I want to just encourage everyone to realize it's okay if you missed one time. That's right, that's right. Or even another time or another time. It is never too late to start something mm. today. Yes. Now. And your soul will give you those nudges. Yes. And when you do not act upon it, okay, there mm. will be another time. That's right. And so if you have that feeling, now it's a time, do it. I love it. And this is from someone, ladies and gentlemen listening, that 
was a performer from a younger age, always had it in her, and then obviously let herself go all in in her 20s and, and beyond. And still to hear you talk about these moments that you've had where the fear was there, the anxiety was there. You had to go into your training and, <clears throat> excuse me, the breath work or the, the meditation or whatever the, that process was for you. You had to resort back to, to, get, to get the mind right, mm -hmm. to get the, the no's and the I can'ts and the, you know, all that negative self-talk out of your system. It doesn't matter what level you've reached. I think we're all capable of succumbing to those I can't and, and those no's and those negative uh, little voices that float around in our brains. And so I don't want anyone listening to think like, well, I'm, that's, I, you know, I'm, I'm, un, I'm incapable of, the, of, yeah. of doing this big thing that I would like to do for myself, this lofty goal or whatever it is. Yeah. Fear is, uh, holds everyone back from and, and so much. And even the biggest speakers or mm. the biggest people yes. on on stages yes. or in in front of the camera they all have to deal with limiting beliefs that come up yes the difference is when you're a little bit further advanced you snap out of it fast yes right it doesn't sit with you exactly and and you you don't linger in these feelings you know what to do so We all have that, and we will deal with that even to the day when we leave this planet. That's right. I remember I listened to Wayne Dyer. He was one of my great um, mentors and, and, and heroes. And he said, and he was so elevated, so to speak, right? But he shared one time that he was like losing it because there were so many things that were thrown at him mm. and this person wanted something, this person wanted something and, and he was like, ah, he was screaming and was just had this human moment. Yes. And when he shared that, I felt good that I know it's not me alone. That's right. And that's one of the things that I also in my podcast uh, share that the stories and the people that I interview is you are not alone. Mm. Everybody had something. And when you hear that, you feel a little better and you also know that you can overcome that. That's right. Yeah, it's walking in someone else's shoes or at least understanding that we've all gone down these paths before. There's so much to learn from other people uh, in seeing how they handle the stressors of life and the difficult moments mm -hmm. and the challenges and things. And, and it really does, it comes down to that training, that confidence in yourself and putting in the work, getting those reps. Yes. What I talk about with my, the, the boys that I've been coaching now for years and years. And I, I coach my son who I just, he's such a, um, he's so talented in lots of ways, very artistic. Um, but he's such a good ball player because He, he puts in the work, he loves it, but he puts in the work and he's had those big opportunities, those moments, that big uh, time up on the mound to throw a, an important inning or the big at bat. And he's been the one that scored the winning run in the championship <laughs> game, you know? And when you, when you stack those mm -hmm. on top of each other, you become formidable because you, you've put in the, and gotten those reps, so you trust yourself. There's a confidence in putting yourself out there because you know, I'm going to be okay. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm not perfect, but I, as long as I give it my best, I, it, uh, I'll, I'll be okay with the, the outcome. Exactly, and that's what I uh, told myself and what I tell all my clients. Allow yourself... To make mistakes. Yes. Allow yourself and acknowledge yep. that you're not perfect. Yep. But it's the getting through that stage that will help you overcome anything with yeah. the right techniques and the right help and training. Is there a transformation? Now, you obviously work with people and you've worked with people for many years now. So this might be a, a, a tough one to come up with because there's so, so many. Is there an example of a transformation that you've seen in someone else who came to you for your expertise and you really saw them 
and we've used this word elevate or <clears throat> really climb to a different level of performance or of communication from a you know from a stage perhaps or you know in uh, maybe there's somebody that wanted to be able to talk in front of hundreds if not thousands of people with their message mm -hmm. uh is there something that comes to mind when you i'm sure if, uh, more than one so but. yes yes uh, from from small little steps it doesn't have to be always huge right, right? so from i i worked uh, one time with a uh, lady who wanted, she was not afraid to talk one-on-one, -on -one, but mm. she was afraid to talk in front of the camera. Mm. And so she went through my camera confidence training. And when I saw her actually talking about it, she was confident and she said, now I have the confidence to just step up and do it. Yeah. And that's exactly what is right. Yeah. And thinking back, oh my gosh, that kind of connects the experience that I had with my teacher, that when I became the teacher, when I had my performing arts school, there was one young um, girl, a teenager, and she came just to take dance lessons. And I remember our first play that we did was Aladdin. And she oh, looked fun. like Jasmine. <laughs> and I said, and she took also acting. I said, I would like for you to play Jasmine. And she said, oh, I can't sing. Who said, let me be the judge let, of let it. Let me work on that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I did. So I said, yeah, she has talent. So I worked with her. I gave her singing mm. lessons. She sang Jasmine and was beautiful. She ended up, and I helped her get into the uh, co uh, performing arts um, college in Miami. She, was, she got a scholarship. Uh, she she uh, finished cum laude. And then she went on tour. She played in New York on big stages, wow. and today she's actually the dean or the head of a drama uh, department in a private uh, performing arts school on the East Coast in Florida. Oh my goodness. And uh, a couple of years ago, she and we we stayed in contact. Uh, she's like a surrogate daughter to me, oh right? Oh my goodness, yeah. Um, so, and she invited me to see a show that she uh, um, Produced directed, directed with their, their um, a student body, and it was Beauty and the Beast. And then afterwards, there was the last performance. She stood up on stage and said, you are all beautiful. You did a great job. And I want to encourage you to keep going. And I was encouraged by my teacher. And oh, my teacher, is my, my husband was there too. And they're in the audience right now. Uh, and I mean, a tears came oh, down. Of course, my, I, my, I can my only cheek. imagine. That, that, that impact and that mm. ripple effect that you have. Mm. And you see someone and then that someone uh, makes a difference in somebody else's mm. lives. What else can you ask for? No, you can't ask for more than that. Yeah, it's, it's about how, you, how you're able to change people. Um, and to, just to feel like you had uh, some part in it mm -hmm. and to see someone else shine. There's probably no better feeling. Yes. Pride. Yes. I guess. So, a good pride, though. Yes. That, you know, not, yes. Not, the, not, the, not the pride ego pride, but the, the pride in seeing someone else. Like you're feeling good because someone else's excellence or mm -hmm. someone else's vulnerability or someone else's just stardom. Right. And it makes you feel like just the fact that I know that person, I know the work they put in, I know their heart, you know, all these things. And it's such a great thing to see someone else do something excellent. And sometimes you start with a project or something that you didn't even expect that to happen. Mm, right. So, uh, for example, right now, I... Um, uh, in the middle of publishing my third book, which is actually a compilation book, uh, it's called Become, it was based on my, my um, podcast, mm. Become Empowered, Echoes of Grace and Strength, in which I share my story, and there are 12 other women who contributed their stories. Mm. Th these are powerful stories, entertaining and powerful stories that shows that, that overcoming. But what I realized is the ripple effect that I started, mm. 
the impact that I made in these women, first of all, but then also I know when that book comes out, other people will read it, not just women. Uh, men should read it too because sure. there are a lot of great clues for men to understand women maybe a little bit better. Mm. Um, and when you f have that feeling, and which, which I am realizing right now, oh my gosh, is there is something, I started that ripple effect. And as, as you can see, I, you know, the butterfly, is that's mm. my symbol for the podcast and also for the book. And it reminds me, we all come to a point, we, we start out, you know, as the caterpillar in our lives, yes. sometimes, you know, as young adults, teenagers, and then there's something happens, and it's different whatever stage in your life it is, but that we have to just stop and be and let the change happen. You see... When a caterpillar comes into this cocoon, actually it dissolves. It has to let go of the old, totally dissolves, and then being put together by nature, it's mm. just a beautiful thing. Yes. And then starts out as that something new, that butterfly, which actually can fly and take wings and yeah. has that great potential. And so have we that potential yeah. is with in each one of us, and yeah. you and me and everyone. That's right. And I just encourage everyone to to realize that. And once you do, and even if you have to get help with something, by all means, I had many coaches and and trainers in my life, so mm. probably you too, mm -hmm. that helped me through that process. Yes. But it's possible. Mm. We have to become the person. We are meant to be, to live the life we are destined to live. Yeah, oh, that's great. I love it. It makes me think of countless people that I that have influenced me uh, over the years. And I'd encourage anybody listening, if there is somebody that you can think of right now that really lit a spark or a fire under you at some point, uh, reach out to them. If you're not in contact with them, reach out and let them know how uh, powerful that was for you and how meaningful it was. Um, for them to hear from you, especially if you've not stayed in contact with them, that would be so fantastic. <laughs> Send them a card in the mail or a phone call or, you know, a any, anything. Anything. Yeah, to let them know because I can only imagine um, – how good that would make them feel because there there's nothing quite like it it's kind of like the sentiment of is better to give than to receive yes. it is it's better to give and see someone else um really enjoy something a gift but if you rather. get that receive if you if you get it back you receive back through that in many different yes, ways yes absolutely so to to finish that story that i started out at the beginning when I had that chance meeting with my teacher. Yeah. Now, mind you, I'm living in the States. He lives in Hamburg, Germany. Yes. And after I recorded my CD in 2006, so I visited my family in 2007, and I made a point to find out where he was. Mm. He was not in the school any longer, but he was still working for the school district. Mm. So I found out where he was working, and... I went one afternoon, so I went to the office and I introduced myself. Uh, I said, I'm a former student of Dietmar Herbst. Is he available? Yeah. And they said, yes. So I went to his office and he saw me and said, oh my gosh, Sabine. And then I said, I want, I'm here to thank you because you changed my life. And I gave him my CD uh, and we had a conversation and he was so touched. Mm. And that is, that was a wonderful feeling for me to yes. give back yeah, to, to him. To give back to him, yes. So that, that, that closed that circle. So mm. to your, what you just said, yes. thank somebody who made a, di mm. a difference in your life. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we've all had a coach or a mentor of some way, a teacher, mm. uh, somebody that, that we looked to mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I, I mean, I can, I, I'd probably be able to write a list of a hundred <laughs> people right now of all the people I should probably thank 
on some level for their encouragement or something that they did that catapulted me. Well, uh, how in about my life. making it a habit mm. to once a week? It doesn't even have to be every day, but once a week, you just find one person, and even if it's a neighbor who maybe mowed your grass on your side, just <laughs> go to them and say, thank you, that made a difference. I didn't have to do this. Something as simple yeah. as that. Yeah. If you give thanks, gratitude is one of the highest vibrations. Mm. Yes, it is. Love, joy, gratitude. And when we have that vibration, as I mentioned in my story, when I was elevated mm. through music, that gives you that vibration too. Mm -hmm. We function on a much higher and greater level yeah. and get things done. No, there's no, yeah, no doubt about it. I agree. Wow, that's good to think about. Um, so you have mentioned a couple of times that you have a podcast named, <clears throat> pardon me, Become. And uh, I would love to know a little bit. I know a little bit about it, but I'd love our audience to know a little bit more about it. Uh, it's a weekly podcast. It's interview-based. Yes. Uh, you have great conversations with folks. Tell our audience a little bit more about what you've been doing with it. Sure, sure. Yes, um, most of the episodes are interview-based. Mm -hmm. Some of them, I have a solo episode where I share my uh, wisdom and piece of, pieces of nuggets that I accumulated throughout my lifetime. But it all has to do with becoming. What I mentioned before, that process that a butterfly goes through mm. or the caterpillar to, to become the, the mm. butterfly. And the stories that my guests share, is they are very encouraging. They, they share... And they're from all walks of life, mm. all walks of life, businesses, entrepreneurs, or not. But they share a time in their life in which they had to go through that metamorphosis stage. Or it was so challenging that they had to stop. Mm. Or whatever it may be that helped them get through that process and came out on the other side as what I call their next greater self. Mm. Because that's what we're here for in life. We are evolving. And when we grow, and if you put that into your forefront, growth is important. Growth means progress, and mm. progress means happiness when we progress in our lives. And I want my listeners to be encouraged to be entertained. Some of them are very entertaining because you listen to stories, mm. which is one of the things that I teach my clients. Use stories. Yes. Stories are entertaining and you can teach with stories. Yes, parables. And yes, stuff. oh best my gosh. Way. Who the best teacher who've ever lived is Jesus and he used parable all the time in order for people to understand his message. Yes. And sometimes... They still didn't get it. Yes. Because it was so layered. Mm -hmm. But parable and storytelling has been around for thousands of years. And it's the, I think it's the best way mm -hmm. to be able to communicate a, a message or a feeling, an emotion, a, 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 some type of te you know, t teaching um, uh, teaching moments. Uh, moments. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So absolutely. I still remember I was in, in first grade or second grade or something like that. And the teacher shared a story because we had an, our, our uh, atlas. Oh, I don't know in English uh, what it called. So where you have your um, map. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, atlas. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. you still? Oh, yeah. We use that word. Oh, here you go. In fact, <laughs> if you go back several years went before you know phones uh -huh, and GPS uh -huh. and all this, they had the big Rand McNally Atlas books. I don't know if you were ever yeah. used any of these, the giant ones that were all colorful and had all the right. highway systems and everything. I used to love those. Right, right. Because my brothers and I would go on these long trips from New England, where I'm from, down to Florida to visit mm -hmm. my folks. This is, I'm dating myself now, almost 30 <laughs> years ago. And we would make these drives, and this is before cell phones or any of that business. Yeah, you need an And so you had your map so right. that you knew, okay, well, if we don't go this way, let's go this way, or there's a detour. Okay, right. you needed your map. But when you are first grader, you don't have a concept of that. So you no, see houses, of course not. right? Right. So the teacher told a story uh, when she introduced us to El Atlas, right? Uh, that there was a big giant and the giant came and stepped on the houses yes. and made it all flat. 
And guess what? Like what, 40, 50, I don't even know how many years later, I still remember that story. Yes, you do. It made an impression. It made an impression. Can you imagine when you, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, you can tell stories or mm. teach something to your client that makes the difference and an impact, you set yourself apart from the yes. rest. And I think that was one of your questions that you asked at the beginning. Yeah. How do you set yourself apart? Yeah, yeah. You have something unique within you. And that's what I'm pulling out of my clients. What mm. is your uniqueness? Mm. So I gave them their celebrity signature talk. We work on it together. And you don't have to be a movie star to be a celebrity. Yes. You can have your celebrity signature talk that you then share with your audiences, mm. with your potential clients. And when you do it in a way that you also incorporate stories and have the right presentation, this is when you set yourself apart and put your business into the spotlight. Wow, it's wonderful. It, it is, being a good storyteller is, which is essentially a good communicator, is what evokes emotion and some type of change in others. Mm -hmm. So if you, with your words, are able to change someone else, the way they view things, the way they feel about things, the way they think about things, uh, it's very powerful. And um, so, yeah, I mean, gosh, I, I've always, like you and I, a lot of similarities. I was always like a little bit of a performer when I was a kid. I would dance in front of our company or sit behind my little Muppet drum set and play <laughs> play drums or, you know, sing, whatever I could do to be in, and in, in, in it's carried with me. I never really, I was a bit of an ac actor in high school but I never continued down that path, but I w loved communications and TV and radio, and sure enough, here I am doing a podcast, <laughs> yeah. and I've made thousands of YouTube videos over the years and been in products and stuff, video-based products, and I will tell people the first 100 videos I ever made were probably awful, and I would cringe to go back and watch myself because, <laughs> but you have to go through that process mm -hmm in order to, again, gain that experience and that confidence in yourself and everything is reps and training and, and, the, and stacking, um, stacking those experiences mm -hmm. on top of each other. Yes. And uh, not giving up on yourself. It's, it's, it's wonderful stuff. I, so um, but if it's you so want to have encouraging. A, if, if you want to have a shortcut, it's mm. yes, absolutely right. Yes. You have to do it and you have to start. Is there ugly. a shortcut? There is actually. Yes. <laughs> so you can do something over and over again, but if you do something over and over again wrong, wrong. then that will uh, leave an imprint. And for some people, mm. even uh, made them quit ah, to give gotcha. up. Because I, I can do it, I can do it. It's That's just right. terrible, terrible, terrible. Yeah. So the shortcut that I'm talking about, obviously, is to work with someone who can help you. Yes. I mean, you know it too in when you do your workouts. If I do a workout wrong, yeah, I can hurt myself. Yes. And then I totally give up. That's right? right. So, but if you show them the right way, then you get them faster where they want it to right. go. That's right. That's right. Same thing in public speaking. Same thing in the presentation, same thing when you get on camera or you have to go do lives on social media. You may be terrible at the beginning, but if you have someone who can point out those things, if you have the right training to prepare yourself, mm. to do the right priming, and then not only will you feel better about yourself, but you also will be better on yes, camera or yes, on stage. Yes. And that will then give you that shortcut that you go from A to B in a short amount of time. Mm. And when you are where you want to be in a short amount of time means, and especially in business speaking, you can also make income in a short amount of time. Yeah. Because that's sometimes what people forget. They say, I'll figure it out myself, you know, and I don't want to you know, put in anything in to myself or in the business. But they forget that that might take 10 years or 15 years that they already, maybe in one year, they could already get things mm. 
and income and revenue yes. in. Yeah. Look at that, what you all missing out. Yeah, it's a great point. Yeah. It's a great point. Um, yeah, you can do things over and over poorly yeah. and never quite get to where you should be had you just been redirected a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's great. Um, so that being said, our listeners are probably curious about where they can come and learn more about what you do and how you can help them. So where would be the, the best place for our listeners to go to find you or if they are interested in maybe getting in contact with you or working with you? Absolutely. So you can always go to my website yes. and get free resources. I have free resources and you can get some courses and whatnot. Just go to sabinekavenberg.com yes. forward slash resources. Ah. Or if you want to talk with me, if you want to set up your speak like a pro call, just go to talktosabine.com. Oh, how nice is that? Well, that's even that's really easy. <laughs> yes, but yes. I will, of course, I will include this in the show description and the link uh, for those interested. Just scroll down there, and you will be able to uh, search that up real quick. And uh, it would be, uh, I'm sure, highly beneficial to anyone even considering it because of, you know, if if you can if you can level up your communication skills. Uh, on camera or from the stage, um, your message will be more clear and better received. Uh, and that goes for lots of different, um, you know, industries or, or, you know, I mean, there's, it can, it can benefit anybody in any walk of life. Yes. Really yes, can. Yes. And let me leave you with one final thought. Please. So the other day <clears throat> I was, standing under the shower. And I had a leaking shower head for weeks. And when you are a woman, you don't want to wash, wash your hair all the time, no. but I always had to. <laughs> so I said to myself, okay, it, it's enough. I'm going to fix it. So I went to the store. I bought a shower head, yeah. came back home, wanted to put it on just to see it doesn't fit with a hose anymore. So I had to go back to the hardware store, get a hose, came back. Then I realized I didn't have the right tools to put oh it all my together. Goodness. So somehow I managed to put it all together, put it back up, ready to take a shower. And then water sprayed everywhere. Oh, I know what happened. So I was like, no. And isn't that so true? Sometimes we cannot do things ourselves. They're actually, we would be better off to hire an expert who can do that because we don't do this every day. Mm -hmm. We have not learned it and someone else does it every day. Yes. And so if you think just, oh, I'll just go up and speak and have the perfect presentation. That's not the truth. Yes. And if you can, because you, you may be able to do it, but you may go all over the place. Your message mm. go all over the place. And it takes time to mm. figure things out. And you take all this time, and at the end, it still doesn't work. And that's why you need an expert in whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So this is just what I wanted to leave your audience with. And no matter where they are, what they do, if they want to become a, a better athlete, or wanted to pop, buff up and you know get in shape, get a coach like you are. Mm. Or if you want to put your business, business into the spotlight, want to become a better presenter, become more confident, mm -hmm. hire an expert. If it's me or someone else, I don't care, mm. right? But this is what you want to do. Yes. That's great. Well said. And so true. We all can use a coach in, in various areas of our life. Um, yeah, I have some myself. Uh, and um, you, you're never too old to learn or to, to do that thing that's been... Nudging you? Yeah, nudging you <laughs> along the way. You're never too old for it. Um, so it's been absolutely just wonderful having you here. Um, always better to do these in person when we can. Yes. Uh, virtual is great. It is. But, but person, look at this. In person, we can I know. actually 
touch each that, other. That's right? what I'm saying. That's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> You know, 2020 made everybody so used to virtual podcasting. So yeah. it's always, it is always nice to be able to bring people in when they are close by. And so we thank Sabine, of course, for uh, making the trip here to Critical Bench. Listeners, hope you take some action and do that thing that's been nudging you or, uh, you know, something that you've bl- put off for far too long in your life. And it's time to uh, get back into it, live out your passion maybe speak in front of people or at least clearly communicate your message. Uh, Really, really fun conversation today. Something a little different here on Strong by Design. We hope you uh, possibly share this episode with a friend or family member who could benefit from all the great nuggets that Sabina shared today. Uh, Hit that five stars if you could, and maybe even think about leaving us a review. We would certainly appreciate that very much. We'll be back next week, as always, here on Strong by Design. God bless you. Thank you so much for listening to the Strong by Design podcast. If you found value in today's episode, Please subscribe so that more people can find out about our show. Plus, you don't want to miss any future episodes with the amazing guests and topics we have lined up for you.